welcome to the basic computer skills course we're looking at types of computers you may have come across well different types of computers and in this lesson um, you should be able to understand uh, all these different types of computer and the different categories they belong to so at the end of this lesson you should be able to list and explain the different ways that we differentiate between computers and you should be able to distinguish between uh, the different types of computers in terms of their use physical size um, the power of their processing and uh, their capacity to store data and you should be able to demonstrate uh, your understanding of factors that need to be considered when uh, one needs to choose a type of computer to use different ways of classifying computers now in everyday life things are often identified by the kind of category they belong to for example animals can be classified according to whether they live on land or in water so that we have what are known as aquatic animals and terrestrial animals so for example fish uh, lives in water and it's an aquatic animal uh, just like a lion lives on land and it's a terrestrial animal Another way to differentiate between animals is whether they live in the wild or they can also be made to live with people so that we have what are known as wild animals and uh, domestic animals and uh, for example a, a lion is a wild animal then a dog is a domestic animal similarly computers can be distinguished in different ways computers can be classified according to what generation they belong to at what time were they developed what kind of processor did they use another way to classify computers is according to their physical size and the capabilities of their hardware we can also distinguish between computers by the kind of use okay um, what type of application are they used for is it uh, a general purpose computer or is it a special purpose computer now in this course we shall only learn about classification according to physical size and hardware capabilities uh, the other items item a here and b uh, and c rather uh, can be found in other uh, lecture presentations so now let's look at this category of computers which are called mainframe computers as you can see in the image they are quite big in size actually mainframe computers are the largest form of computer and these are not a kind of a computer you're going to want to use at home or just a small company mainframe computers are used for bulk data processing in big companies and they have great processing power and they have extensive storage capacities and one interesting thing with these mainframe computers is that they don't just have one processor inside they have multiple processors to enable them process so many things at one time now what are the uses of mainframe computers what are these big computers used for well organizations use mainframes to process thousands of transactions per second think of a bank when you go to your ATM and you want to withdraw your money you are not the only person who is doing that there are so many other people in different other places using this uh, the ATM for the same bank and that results into thousands of transactions uh, uh, so many transactions being done at one time not just ATM transactions but many other numerous transactions which occur in a bank so mainframes can be used for such kind of purposes then mainframes are also used to support numerous users and application programs which are concurrently accessing numerous resources so for example uh, it could be an organization like a bank again where there are different users different uh, uh, small computers which need to access various resources uh, of the information system of an organization so you can use a mainframe for such kind of work then mainframes are used to manage extremely large quantities of information in databases let's look at another category of computers they're known as mini computers 
Many computers, when you look at their size, it sits in between the size of a mainframe and that of microcomputers. That's a very small version of computers. Now, size, not just in terms of physical size, but we are talking about processing power and storage capacity and other kind of capabilities. So many computers have physical size, processing power, and storage capacity, which is intermediate between a mainframe and a microcomputer. The other thing about mini computers is that uh, they can be used to provide a service to other small computers. Uh, for example, they can provide printing services to other computers which are connected to it or it could be providing software applications for other software computers. And for this purpose, mini computers are actually no longer called mini computers. Many times the term used is server, and another term is mid-range computers. Mini computers are special purpose and often used to run specialist business or scientific applications. So for example, as I said, you can have a mini computer which only provides printing services. Okay, it manages the printers of uh, an organization. So in that case, it only handles such kind of applications. And there are many other kind of applications like scientific applications for which a mini computer can be dedicated to. Mini computers are often used to support certain processing tasks of a mainframe so that you don't overload the mainframe with all kinds of processing works. And uh, this is done to reduce the processing load of a mainframe computer. When used in this way, mini computers are, are called front-end processors because they form a front-end or an interface, in other words, between the computer networks and the mainframe. Like you can see in this image, you have a mainframe here and you have all these different computer networks and they connect to the mainframe through this interface of a mini computer or a front-end processor. Another category of computers are microcomputers. You probably have seen them around you, or, and I believe you are using one right now. There is a laptop, there is uh, a tablet here, a tablet computer, there is a smartphone, and there's another type called a, a desktop. Now, what these, all these uh, computers have in common is that they use a small single chip made of silicon for processing work. It is known as a central processing unit. Now, microcomputers come in various sizes and types, as you saw on the picture. There are, uh, there are some which are small enough to fit on a desktop. We call them desktop computers. Or those which are small enough to sit on a person's laps, a laptop. And others are small enough to be used on palms, uh, tablets. Uh, uh, they used to be, uh, they, they, there was one version called uh, palm tops. Now what is uh, quite common on the market are tablets. And microcomputers are intended to be used by one individual, and that is why they are called personal computers. Microcomputers are very limited processing power and storage capacity when you compare them to the other ones we looked at, like mainframes and mini computers. Now let's talk about these, this other kind. They're not just another kind. These are very powerful computers. They are known as supercomputers very large in size, but what makes them distinct is that they are the fastest and most powerful computers, and they're used for uh, making complex scientific calculations and for creating simulations. Now, supercomputers have extensive processing power and storage capacity, and usually, like you saw in the picture, they are a collection of computers performing uh, parallel processing. Now, unlike mainframes, which are general purpose, supercomputers are designed to handle specialized applications. Like we said earlier, they are usually used to, for such applications like simulations. For example, scientists may want to understand how did the universe form in the beginning. And to do that, you're going to need computers which work at extremely high speeds and with powerful processing power to come up with very complicated scientific algorithms, like uh, you can see in this uh, short video, uh, this is a simple simulation which tries to mimic or to show how uh, the early universe may have formed, the, the, rather the, the Milky Way, how it may have formed. Now, simple as the video looks, 
there are complicated, sophisticated mathematical calculations and algorithms uh, which underlie, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the making of such uh, a video illustration. Now, when do you use what computer? Well, it all depends on your processing and storage requirements. Like we said, mainframes are used in environments where there is need for immense data processing loads of work. Many computers, being relatively cheaper than mainframes, can be an alternative in environments with medium processing workloads. Otherwise, they are used as front-end processors. And microcomputers are for individual use. Like you are using a computer right now to view this uh, lecture. So it's designed just for use for one person at a particular time. <laughs>